In this video, I'm going to be giving some helpful hints for the cello part for Aztec Warrior. At the beginning, we have our eighth note Bs for four measures. I recommend during the rests to count the words rest and, just so that it's not just the word rest and you don't accidentally speed up. So let's play at the beginning on our B eighth notes. Ready, go. Rest and, rest and, rest and, rest and, measure three, rest and, rest and, rest and, rest and. Then you would move over to the D string. During that final rest and before measure five, you'll tilt your bow to the D string. Here, as well as in measure nine, we have four quarters and then two half notes. It's important coming from eighth notes that you slow down for the quarter notes. Um, the, the eighth notes were twice as fast as footsteps would be. Our quarter notes are like footsteps and then our half notes are two beat notes. Let's try at measure five. D, one and two and ready, go. D, D, E, F sharp, half note, half note. The two half notes were D, and that was the same speed, the tempo that we had just been doing with the BBs. So that's the difference between those two speeds. Let's go from the beginning and try to go all the way to 11. One and two, beginning, go. Rest and, rest and, rest and, measure three, rest and, rest and, rest and, open D, half note, get your B ready, rest and, rest and, get your F sharp ready, here's F sharp, B half note, B half note. Now in that section, I was giving you some clues. When you're playing the D half notes at the end of the first line in measure six, get your B on the A string ready so you're ready for those eighth notes. Then if you can, this next one's a little bit trickier. While you're playing those B eighth notes at the beginning of line two, leave your B on the A string because you're still playing B eighth notes, but sneak your middle and ring finger over to the D string to create an F sharp. That way, at the end of measure eight, you're already ready for the F sharp and you can just bring your first finger over as well then. That's a trickier one. That one you might be able to do or might not with practice. Let's now move on to measure 11 or section that starts with measure 11. What I want to draw your attention to is not the eight F sharp quarter notes in 11 and 12 and 15 and 16, but the double rests in a row in measure 13 and measure 17. When we play through it right now, I'm gonna say shh, shh out loud in measure 13 and 17, so you notice those two, eight, uh, two quarter rests in a row. In measure 14, I'm gonna say two, three, four, because those are your beats of rest. You're not playing on beat two, you're not playing on beat three, you're not playing on beat four. And lastly, in measure 18, that rhythm is gonna look familiar of D, D, rest and, D, D, rest and. It's just like what you had at the beginning, except with open D instead of B. The really tricky thing in here is measure 13 and 17 with those two rests in a row, which is why we're going to say shh, shh out loud. Here's measure 11. Ready, go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Shh, shh. I would do there. I would jump from the end of 18 all the way to 39 because that's the cut that we made in the piece. Another thing, another little clue or hint or sneaky thing if you can, we start with F sharps at 11. While you're playing those eight F sharps, I snuck my first finger over to the A string so I would be ready for B in measure 13. If you can do that, you can leave two, three on the D string and sneak one over to A. Let's play at 11 one more time. One and two and ready, go. Sneak it over. Shh, shh. Two, three, four. Now at 39, it's just like measure three. So you've already pay, played 39 to 47. Uh, final thing before we move to 47, in measure 18, you're playing open D right before you jump to 39. 
during those open Ds, put your B on the A string. So you've just gone E, E, sh, sh, E, E, D, D, get your B ready, then play B, B. That's a useful thing. When you're playing an open D, look at whatever the next note is. If it's not on the D string, then you should get it ready ahead of time because your fingers are free to do so. Let's now look at the end at 47. This is the part we haven't played yet. The rhythms in 47 and 48 are the same as the rhythms in 5 and 6, 4 quarters and 2 halves. Let's play that at 47. 1, 2, 3, 4. F sharp, B, e, D, D, E, A. And that changes there. There we have quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, rest. Let's play that. One and two and ready, last measure. Quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, rest. Let's do it again. Last measure, ready, go. Quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, rest. Again, last measure, ready, go. Quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, rest. By the time I say rest, my bow's already off the string. I take it off at the end of the last, uh, of the last note. You also will notice two dots above two of the notes in the last measure. Those are staccato dots. And staccato dots tell us to play something quite short. So instead of saying quarter, I'll now say short. Take a listen once. Ready, listen. Short, eighth, eighth, short, off. Join me. Ready, go. Short, eighth, eighth, short, off. Again, last measure. Ready, go. Short, eighth, eighth, short, off. Let's now play all of 47. 47, one and two, 47, ready, go. Half note, half note, short, eighth, eighth, short, off. The final piece of the puzzle is you see a crescendo there. Maybe it's this direction for you, I'm not sure. The crescendo, that alligator mouth, that crescendo is telling us to get louder little by little. And it's a really dramatic thing to hear. So right now, let's play 47 once more, and let's start a little quieter and crescendo as we go. One and two, crescendo as you go. It makes that ending sound a little bit more dramatic. If you'd like to, I have another version of Aztec Warrior for cello up where I don't talk or give hints, and we just play through the song. Thank you.